All right, now this is a uh, part three. Yeah, three of uh, us building this rig. So let me get into the processor. Uh, I'm only gonna open one of them, but we got two of these, and it's a um, it's an Intel Xeon E5645 Westmere EP 2.4 gigahertz processor with a 12 megabyte L3 cache. It's a LGA 1366 form factor and it's an 80 watt um, six core processor, you know, so that will give you an idea of uh, how much power is going to be supplied by the um, power supply essentially. So there's two of them, so there's 160 watts for these chips. Um, there's chips that run at 130 watts, there's some that run at, 100, uh, run at 40 watts, a lot lower power consumption, and those are way more expensive. Um, but again, because I got this motherboard, the only motherboard, on the market for uh, dual processors that can uh, overclock the processors. We should be able to overclock these to a 3.0 with the cooling. Um, now make sure that uh, when you install the chips, which we're going to be doing a little bit later, that you put enough thermal paste on the top because I've learned my lesson the hard way back a couple years back in college. I burned the chip by not putting enough. Um, also make sure that on the motherboard itself, you see these little prongs. Uh, for the chip. If you bend any of those, you may be screwed. So definitely be careful with that. The, the next option up from these chips was a 2.66 gigahertz uh, processor. Let's talk about the price for a little bit. These processors were uh, $544 each from the internet. Um, the suggested retail price is about $580 to $650 depending on when and where you get it from. But uh, the next step up like I mentioned earlier, the 2.6 liter processor is $1,010. So because I got this motherboard, you know, spend $300 extra from your average price motherboard for something like this, I just saved $800 right there from going to the next uh, level up on the chip speed, and we're going to be able to overclock these a lot more than that. So you know, it's a big, big money saver. Definitely planning for the future here. Uh, so I already mentioned the thermal paste, and also make sure that you choose the right cooling you know we are going to be using water cooling and we're going to talk about this very quickly the water blocks we got make sure they're specific to LGA 1366 or whatever form factor you're using if you're using a heat sink and a fan make sure that's correctly chosen as well and if you have to get separate brackets if they don't come for example with the water block make sure you get the correct ones as well and the last thing but not least you know, hopefully nobody will make this stupid mistake, but make sure your motherboard supports the chip that you got again. I mean, otherwise, you're gonna have to, you know, you're gonna have to check problems. it online. Yeah, <laughs> actually, this is a special motherboard. You know, don't just assume that if something is an LG A1366 form factor, it's gonna work with any motherboard that says it. Some motherboards are more specific, and you have to go on their website and check out which particular um, processor it supports, believe it or not. And I had to do this for this just to be sure, but uh, we've got everything correctly chosen. And uh, let's go ahead and install it real quickly. Mm -hmm. All right guys, just a little quick, we're putting the chips in, we already got one in there. And uh, we're putting the second one in. And just, if you're actually using this exact same configuration or something similar, when you clamp the chip down, it makes a little noise like it's pressing down each other. Don't freak out. It's supposed to kind of, you know, push it into to make sure all the contacts are connecting and you're getting all the processing power out of it. So just want to mention that they're both in. We're good to go. Next step. So in terms of the chip, you put enough thermal paste to cover the whole thing, but you don't want to cover the whole thing too much because you got to remember that the copper heating is going to smash down on it, basically squish on the thermal paste and even it out. So this is a good amount, I would say. Uh, so take a note of that and then we're going to have to put the same amount on the other side as well. Um, but then we'll show you the finished product as the uh, water blocks sit on top of the chips.